everybody. Welcome. Happy Tuesday to this session. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. 28 people in the session. Those numbers are going to go up. Where is everyone at in the world today? I know we've got Nicole in Australia. Drop it in the chat. Where, where, where's everyone coming in from today? I'm based in Colorado Springs, so it's going to be five o'clock my time. Super excited for this session today, everyone. This is the first time we have done a gap analysis skills challenge. Gap analyses are my love language. Oh, you're in Melbourne. That's my spirit city. Um, so hopefully we're going to have some amazing questions from y'all being that this is the first time that we've run this challenge, drop things in the chat, Q and a share your work, raise your hand, but first and foremost, let's introduce our clicked coach, Nicole, Nicole, tell us how you came to Salesforce, what you love most about Salesforce. And I'm going to put you on the spot the weirdest thing about you three questions <laughs> oh far out okay all of those are hard all right no well first one's easy how did i um come across salesforce as a customer working for a not-for-profit in the uk february the 12th 2008 i was in a room salesforce came in and demoed salesforce to the organization and i just went oh my god um so that was a, like a sliding doors moment changed my life um i do know the date i remember it exactly um and I texted my wife under the table. I said, I think I found my new career. Um, first half, what do I love about Salesforce? Always learning something. Last week, after 15 years of playing with the solution, I stood up a health cloud demo and learned a shed load of stuff, um, which was cool. Um, and the weirdest thing, far out, I don't know. Everything's weird. I think if you're not weird, you're boring. Um, I can fit my, fit my fist in my mouth. That's a bit of a weird thing. <laughs> Okay, that that's an odd talent. I could do that yep. when I was younger. I ha can't say I've tried it as an adult, but let's just say I can do it too. So, but yeah. you have company. <laughs> awesome, Nicole. Have you ever met a drop bear? There are yeah, hundreds, thousands on the road. I walk out the house and there's drop bears all over the place. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> For those of you who are not Aussies or familiar with the concept, correct me if I'm wrong. This is my understanding. A drop bear is a koala that has stopped eating eucalyptus and is extremely grumpy. So drops on people's heads and hurts them. Is that correct? Um, actually, a drop bear is a mythical creature that we invent to scare tourists. There is no okay. such thing. Excellent. So there we go. Some some fun facts about Nicole today. Um, Alrighty, everyone. Who is here for the first time? Show me a heart if you're here for the first time. Show me some confetti if you are returning. Let's see what mix we got. Mostly returning people today. Amazing. Love old new uh, old faces. Also love new faces. At Clicked, this is how these sessions work. Core Clicked principles we learn from each other. Every single session is different. It's feedback, it's discussion, it's not a lecture, it is a safe space to try. There's no grades, there's no scores, there's no judging, there's no, you did it wrong, you fail, you get an F, absolutely not. You just bring what you have and you get feedback on it and then you improve on it so that we can be constantly learning and iterating and up-leveling not only our skill set but our growth mindset, which is the key to success in life. And lastly, of course, we like to have fun these sorts of sessions are an improv session. Most of the time, I don't know what's going to happen. All that I know is I'm going to ask Nicole a lot of questions about gap analyses. Y'all are going to ask a lot of questions about gap analyses. We're going to learn a lot and we're going to have fun. I promise I will make some terrible jokes and that is what we will do. Overview and prompt, which is what we just did. We're going to introduce the goals, rules, principles, your experience and scenario details. We'll give our coach some time to give us tips and tricks on how to approach the challenge. And then we will start the timer. 20 minutes, we'll give you all the scenario and the task, which by the way, has also been posted in the LMS for the last two days. So hopefully you have had a chance to drop in and take a look at that. We will have some mm, witty banter in the background while you can either listen to us to learn about gap analyses or go into hyper-focus mode 
and work on cre completing your gap analysis. And then we will bring our wonderful learners up onto the stage for feedback, questions and answers, and then wrap up. We actually already have some hands in the queue, so we may start that part sooner because it's the best part. All right, so let's introduce our scenario and our task. You are a Salesforce consultant and have been hired for a project to support Cricket Wireless. They need to improve their billing and service request handling processes, but their current tools create inefficiencies and data analysis challenges. You and your team will be working to improve this process. Your goal is to implement new tools and processes to streamline service requests and improve data analysis capabilities so that Cricket can better address customer needs and improve customer satisfaction in preparation for the busy holiday season. You have been provided two sets of interview notes, which I will post in the chat right now for easy access. And here is the task is for you to complete a gap analysis on the transition from the current to future state based on the information you've gathered from the team and the work you have completed so far. All right, define your future state in a single statement based on the work that you've done so far from the interview notes. Complete this prompt in this format. Cricket's desired future state is to be, as an example, and then also the current state. Cricket's current state is dot, dot, dot. So we're almost mm, building a bridge. Identify the gap between the current and the future state and create an action plan to bridge the gap. We'll go into what exactly that means later on here, just in a second. Write an overview of your analysis and recommendations based on all the work that you've done and then compile the tasks and projects that must be done to accomplish the shift towards the de desired future state. Take all of that and put it into a presentation. PowerPoint, Google document, keep it simple. We don't need to see anything crazy here today. In your presentation, you can use your current, future, and gap analysis products to illustrate the pain points, processes, and challenges by the stakeholders. Okay. It sounds like a lot, so let's make it simple. You'll know you're done when you've identified the current and future state for the Cricket team and created an action plan to bridge the gap. Your presentation can take any form as long as it illustrates pain points, processes, and challenges mentioned by the stakeholders. All right. So... With that, with that large and lofty task, Nicole, tell us everything we need to know in five minutes about how we can be successful at this task. Oh, five minutes. Okay. Um, so in the olden days, consultants would spend months doing what I call navel gazing, sitting there, working with people, defining absolutely everything they did, having a gorgeous, lots of hundreds of thousands of gorgeous process flows and arrows and boxes and yada, yada, yada. And then they'd say, what's next? So we've got our current state and that's taken us months to get to that point. What's next? What's coming? How do we improve it? That kind of was like how waterfall worked, right? Waterfall projects where you do a lot of work up front to define everything, get everything nutted out. And that could literally take like I've worked with customers who have spent six months doing that before they even start talking to a vendor to choose Salesforce, choose a platform and implement. And by the time you get to implement, it's been a year and those processes have changed. Mm -hmm. Not only have those processes changed, the requirements have changed, the future state has changed, the world around you has changed. And so we now blend the as is and to be exercise into a much shorter time frame. Um, we look at both at the same time because time to value, time to solution has to be faster. Um, if you take three months to deliver a solution, that's a long time these days, right? You've got to be quick, you've got to be fast. So the exercise that we do um, with organizations, and it's always scalable depending on the size, like some some discovery workshops or some discovery processes that we do take a week, right? Some take a month. Um, <clears throat> six weeks is a long time in a, for a big project. So it's for me, it's always about finding the balance. How much time do you spend talking about what you do now versus how much time do you spend talking about the better way to do it? Because if you think about it, 
the only reason organizations are looking at a new technology solution is because what they're doing right now doesn't work. Right. So let's not spend forever talking about the as is without also thinking about the to be. And people naturally do that anyway, right? Like it's hard to talk about one or the other separately. If you want to talk about the to be, um, people are going to talk about the as is. In fact, it's often hard to bring them out of that conversation. Well, the button's mm -hmm. blue. It has to be blue. I want it to be blue. It's always been blue. But, but could, could it be yellow? Is, is that okay? Is it, could, right? You have to draw them out of that conversation. So always find that balance. Um, and it's different for every customer different for every situation um, and that's part of the skill and you'll only get that through practice like this um, and and learning on the job fun okay all right everyone who's ready give me an emoji if you're ready to start the timer and start building your gap analysis based on these tips and the task at hand all right let's do this so what i'm going to do is i will put the task up on the screen we will start the timer and we'll start bringing people up officially on stage in about 20 minutes, but we already have people in the queue. So we may start that process a little bit sooner. But before we do that, I do have a question, Nicole, you talk about the balance between the now and the then, <laughs> and you say, okay, great. We, we have to find that balance between talking about what are the pain points? What are all the things that's wrong versus the grass is greener on the other side when everything's just going to be wonderful. If we have never done a gap analysis before, or if we're completely new to this work, where would you suggest starting as some sort of framework to help us from staying stuck mm -hmm. in the puddle of today land? You know, like, how do we, how do we, yeah. find that balance? so Let's think about it. So if we say we've got a two hour workshop with uh, a, a group of people, right? So first of all, you know, whenever you start a discovery process, you're identifying the processes that you want to address and the teams of people who are currently involved in delivering those processes. And that could be one particular team or even one person, or it could be that that process spans multiple teams and you have to think about how um, yeah, always choose Salesforce. Yeah, uh, blue. Um, so as you as you you know duck around the, the the processes and the teams, how do those things dovetail together? So um, that's the sort of piece that you define at the start of a project with the your, your so your project manager, your biz, your your BA, um, your lead consultant, however many resources you've got, need to be sat with the customer. Um, and on their end, their project manager, their, their um, project product owner, you know, the, 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 whoever's running the whole program of work, because they know their organization, right? So they know um, who are the key people who are going to be um, uh, detractors from the process, uh, who are going to be the champions. They know who are the key people to have in the workshop politically, so you define the processes that you want to address. You then define the right people who are going to talk to those processes. And you come up with a, a schedule of workshops and other things, right? You can shadow people. You can actually literally sit and watch people do their job because what they say they do in a workshop can be quite different from what they actually do when they're at their desk and cutting corners because they're under pressure or doing something differently or having a work around right um so you can shadow people you can workshop um there's a whole yeah you can literally you know if you're talking about sales reps who are out on the uh, on the roads going from organization to organization company to company get in the car with them right so watch what people do and think about how it can be improved and try and abstract the what they do now from the business outcome they're trying to achieve and the limitations of the technology that they're currently using, right? So as an example, I once worked with a, a not-for-profit that used a solution that forced people to give on the first or the 15th of each month, right? So if I said, hey, I'm gonna give you 20 bucks a month, I couldn't choose what date, it had to be the first or the 15th each month. 
Now, there was no business reason. There's no customer reason. In fact, from a donor perspective, that's not a great outcome because I want to donate on the fourth of each month, not the first or the 15th. I want to donate on the fourth. So it's not a great outcome for me, not a great outcome for the um, for the organization, but their technology dictated that that's how it had to be. And to get them out of that mindset and into the, yeah, but why? Why do you do it like that? And what's the benefit? And can, isn't there a, a better way? Um, took a lot of effort. And in fact, we never got there. And the project tanked because of it. So mm -hmm. Um, yeah, trying trying to get people out of that. And I, I one of the um, techniques that I learned when I was at Deloitte was asking why five times, right? Ask Such why. Technique. Yeah, five the five six, whys. Just, five whys. Just keep digging down until the person eventually either realizes that there is no why. The only why is, is them stuck in a hole or stuck because of a particular technology or they you, you elicit some really strong nugget of business information that you weren't aware of before. Um, and that's a really, really good technique, which I love the fact that we learned that from children, right? It's the why, mummy? Why is it like that, mummy? <laughs> yeah, that's such a good point. That's such a good point. Wisdom, wisdom from children. So, so I'm thinking, you know, going back to the silly example of the blue button, why do you need a blue button? Like your branding colors for cricket is green. Why do you need a blue button? Well, we need a blue button because that's the that's the only color that our current system uses. Okay, why is it so important for your people to have that exact same button? Well, it's because in the past when we've chosen different colors, they've had a really hard time finding the button. And so then they spend a lot of time looking here and there and everywhere. They just wanna close the case. They don't wanna be searching for the button. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting into like the design and things like that. But I understand the the the, the why question. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because got, you, you, yeah. you could. So to, just to follow up on that, Rachel, you, you could get to a point where you go, "Oh yeah, you're right. Actually, a blue button is easier to find because of X, Y, and Z." Right? Um, we'll, we'll stick with a blue button. Or you, you, you convince them that actually the, it's not the color of the button that's the issue. It's the mess that's on the rest of the page that's the issue. So, yeah, it, it's not to pre-judge um, what the answer is. It's right. to really push until you get to the, um, the, the real outcome. Right, to get to the root of the problem so that the problem that you're solving is the actual problem and not a symptom of the root mm. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Sita asked, how different different is gap analysis from the process flow of as is and to be? So they're all, I think, they're all part and parcel of the same exercise, right? That um, in order to understand the gap, you have to kind of get to a bit of detail around the as is and the to be, right? Um, I always use buildings, uh, architecture as, as a as a uh, an analogy um when we moved into this house we knew we wanted to renovate it at some point it's a very australian thing to do i don't know if it's the same in the us um and so we spoke to an architect and the architect asked us well what do you want to end up with and we were like well we want this we want to you know we want another two bedrooms because we're growing our family and we need a, a home office because we predicted COVID would hit. And, you know, like here are here are our things. Here are our to be requirements. The as is is the building we're stood in right now. And the to be is the vision of how we want to live our lives. Right. What space we want, what that we want that space to look like. And the architect was able to then go, OK, well, here's the gap. You, your, your as is is a single story, two bedroom fairly small house with a bad layout for the kitchen, et cetera. And your 2B is a little bit of adult space, uh, another bedroom with a, a wardrobe, uh, a separate bathroom, right? That is your that is your gap. Your gap are these things, and that will get you to the, the space that you want to live in. Yeah, yeah. As, as you say, part and, part and parcel of the same. I call it a universal principle, we have this tendency to notice a problem and to think about how we wish it would be different. 
it happens so naturally just in our daily life. Mm -hmm. But with bigger business processes, it just takes a little bit more breaking down and, until we finally get there. Um, <laughs> Darshana says, till the time we hit the bullseye. It took three yeah, to four weeks sense. before the correct, the correct team was looped in. That's so interesting. Asking why could have solved so many problems down the road. Why do you think we don't ask why enough, but we maybe stop at the second or third mm -hmm. why? Not that second or third is wrong, but just that we we don't quite dig deep enough. Um, I think, and again, classic example, last week I was talking to an organization, um, the new system admin there, <clears throat> new, to the, new to the industry as well, right? And so this was her first system admin job, and I've been a little bit of a, a mentor support person for her along the way. And so she picked up the phone and she said, Nick, am I, am I, am I crazy here? But we've got a partner in at the moment who are standing up service cloud for us. And I don't, they're doing some really weird things. And we talked a little bit about what they were doing and what they were building, you know, a custom object to track activities. Um, right. You know, just some, just some weird things that she was seeing. And as we talked, she realized that <clears throat> the challenge wasn't, necessarily the partner although sure but also on their side they were asking for some really specific things right they were they were it would be like me saying to the builder um i think you should use uh you know um i'm trying to think of a good example here i think you should use uh interior mdf on the outside of our house please and the builder going yeah no that's a stupid idea i need to use external wood or whatever for the outside of your house don't tell me how to do my job right whereas what the partner was doing was hearing a requirement and instead of pushing back and saying why was going the easy route and going oh yeah you need a custom object for activities i'm going to just build that yeah mm -hmm. sometimes it's the easier path the easier path is to go okay sure i'm going to make the button blue I'm not going to ask you why the button has to be blue. I'm not going to even explain to you that it'll take us three weeks of custom development to make the button blue, for example, right? I'm just going to do it because it's the easier path for me at that moment in time. It'll mm -hmm. come back to bite you in the end, right? But right here, right now, the easiest thing for me to do is to just do what you're asking. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Like when, when we're talking about, you know, discovery sessions and working with those earlier fate, like earlier stages of the, the life cycle, right? Discovery, user stories, acceptance criteria. We don't come in as BAs and say, okay, we're going to build you a checklist or a pick list. We're going to build all of these custom fields. And will you take a look at the schema builder? Don't you love this solution? Because the stakeholder doesn't necessarily speak that language. And so coming from the other side, it makes sense, right? Receiving a solution seems seems easier. And, and to Monica's point, we don't want to be pushy or as if we're interrogating the stakeholder. So how can we combat the interrogational vibe when really like what needs to happen is we kind of do need to ask more questions, right? How do we avoid the, the interrogation bit? Yeah. And look, it can be challenging. Um, and conversations can get quite confrontational. Um, and that's okay. I think so. So here at SalesFix, we follow, um, <clears throat> what's called the naked consulting approach, um, which is, I'll put it in the book. It doesn't mean we turn up naked, um, uh, by Patrick Lencioni. I'm not sure I've spelled that right in the chat, but Google it. Um, and it's about being, honest and vulnerable and stepping into challenging situations. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great, um, it's a great book to read. Actually, it's a, the, he's got a number of books, but very easy to read, very um, storytelling type approach. And I'd recommend it. Yeah. It's about stepping in and going, do you know what? This is going to be a difficult conversation, but we're having the conversation because we know there'll be a better outcome at the end. There'll either be a better outcome because we understand more about the motivations and the desires of the clients we're working with and or um, the client will actually step back and be able to give us the information that we need rather than telling us what to build, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, those, those conversations are challenging and I think um, for me – when I see projects going wrong, it's not because the, the projects never fail because the technology can't do what you want it to do. 
right? We all know Salesforce can pretty much do everything that we need. Um, projects fail because we haven't got that strong relationship going between customer and implementation partner. So the trust isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, and if, you, if you have challenging questions, it builds trust, right? Yeah, failure Absolutely. in communication. Absolutely. Yeah. Always, always. <clears throat> Lack of trust leads to failed projects because a lack of trust doesn't lead to the safe space to be able to have those difficult conversations, to ask the questions, to get to the root of the problem. Rohan says failure arises due to failure in communication, and therefore the solution is to lean into those vulnerable conversations, knowing that you have a shared, a shared vision of the success of the project. We're sitting on the same side of the table. We're not sitting on the opposite yeah. side. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and sometimes those conversations lead to compromise. Right. Um, and again, trust. Right. You know, again, when we were renovating this house, we've got a corridor that runs down outside this, this room and along the corridor are four cupboards um, under the eaves of the house, making use of that space. Great. Um, one of them, the builder made a mistake and there's a, a beam that run. Anyway, he made a mistake. And we're halfway through the build. The, the builder comes to us and says, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. Here it is. Now, here are the choices. We can either rip it out. Uh, it'll slow the project down by about a month and it will cost me about $10,000 or you can live with it. And because we had the trust, because we'd communicated previously up to that point because we knew that he'd put some skin in the game previously when you know there was some compromises to be made we went it's all right let's just keep going right it's always about trust and relationships mm -hmm. so the builder in that moment kind of did a mini gap analysis if you will here's the problem of where you are here's where you want to be here's a couple different options what do we want to do about it? And almost like, like a collaboration of solutions, which for this skills challenge, there will be less of that collaboration. I think this one's more, mm -hmm. of, let's just lay things out on the table and, and get going. But in, in your work in the future, all of you that are in this session and those that are watching at a future time, that will be something to be, to know, right? Like BA skills, that's all about the people skills and those relationships, those conversations, and how can we present translate stakeholder requirements into human so that we can we can meet the objectives all right everyone let's start the feedback portion i am so excited to see what we've got so um, as we go everyone you may interact in three ways the first way is you can raise your hand this is what tanushree has done we've got a couple more people who have raised their hand if you have questions you can pop it into the q a and also the chat but we'll go ahead and have tanushree the stage is yours you may share your screen and present your gap analysis hello rachel hello nicole hello uh, okay wait a second and for those who are here for the first time when you come up on stage, there's a button that looks like this. We call it the square row. It's the square with the arrow inside. And we can see your screen, Tanushi. Okay. So, okay. Today, I'm going to give presentation on gap analysis as a Salesforce business analyst. So, Cricket Wireless receives a high call volume because of having single channel of customer to communicate which registers to mishandle of these calls. This is because, because of unavailability of raising the queries in any other channel than calling Cricket Wireless. Also, customers are unaware of whom to contact for their issues. Case is not maintained in a system which has the capability to route between team. Due to the lack of self-service tools, the customers have, the, have to rely on phone calls. As there are lack of up-to-date and accurate information that causes frustration. 
so cricket wireless contacted us with all these pain points for the better customer service so me and my team come up with the following solution here we will provide the chat capabilities which is also cost effective as a communication channel and aims to integrate chat capabilities for faster and automated process also we will implement a centralized system for tracking and resolving support tickets we will optimize the automated processes to minimize delay and improve response time next our team will implement self service options to empower customers and reduce the number of support calls we will also develop a comprehensive knowledge base for customers to find information independently and also autom automate route task to save time now cricket team will be provided with centralized knowledge and information sharing to ensure consistent and accurate responses and we will also develop a structured process for creating and maintaining a comprehensive knowledge base lastly we will enhance data analytics capabilities to gain insights into customer behaviors and also regularly review and analyze data to identify areas for improvement but while moving from current state to the future state our team identified some gap while doing the gap analysis we come up with three main points and we also created some action plans to bridge the gap the first point you, is tanushree going to jump in here just for time sake if you could please address one of these and one will go into feedback okay sure so i will go for the first point and the first point is gaps and inconsistencies in communication and the action plans are improve communication channels define clear escalation paths and implement standardized procedures so the second point is inability to evaluate performance of individual and team the action plans for this is develop performance evaluation matrix establish reporting mechanisms conduct regular performance reviews and the third point is inability to analyze data for customer needs and optimizing support processes the action plans are enhance data analytics capabilities and establish reporting mechanisms for key metrics thank you awesome thanks thank you tabin um, good good stuff um good presentation i liked the way um that you used imagery and summary headings rather than including all of the information and then reading it out so for the first couple of slides that was that was really good uh, it meant that we weren't just reading stuff that you were reading at the same time apart from that last slide but that that's that's cool so that's good you were adding value by actually speaking to what was on the slide um and the the um the first slide that talked about the 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 as is really highlighted the key issues right and it was very clear that it was uh, a challenge there's only one channel for people to speak uh, or to engage with the with uh, the customer on so that was why there was a, a, there was a big problem i think the only thing that i thought could have been slightly different was the i think it was the second slide where you talked about the future um and for me that was a list of technology right that was a list of technology components chat or da, 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 which is great but that's telling the customer almost like a shopping list of stuff right i think but what you said 
I think if you if you just flipped it around, right, that the future was going to be a bit more like your your final slide, right? The, the future was going to be to reduce the number of calls by um, providing additional channels for the for the people to contact them. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about the technology, right? You're going to do that by introducing live chat and uh, et cetera, email, et cetera, right? Um, yes. So I, th I think just, just flip it. You know, for us, the technology is the most important thing. The customer doesn't care. The customer probably doesn't even remember what the technology, you know, live chat, live agent. Uh, I don't know, even know, remember what it's called now. You know, is it Pardot? Is it Marketing Cloud for Account Engagement? Like, the names of things don't don't matter to the customer. It's the, the thing, the, the 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 business thing that it's gonna gonna address. So just flip that around maybe a little bit. Sure, sure. I will keep that in mind for the next slide, next presentation. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Tanushri, for being our first presenter. Clap to you, and we'll bring up Monica to the stage. Hi. Just a second. Hello. Hi, Monica. Always wearing such bright colors as always. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Can you see my screen and the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the gap analysis part. So this is the overview. We are going to go through this. And yeah, hi, Rachel. Hi, Nicole. I missed that. Hello. Um, yeah, and this is the scenario that we are going to work. And as a business analyst, you know, we try to understand the current state uh, from the stakeholders. And the way it currently works is, you know, we, we get a call from or email from a customer and then the agent tries to resolve that call you know query within the call if not then we log a case uh you know the case is locked and it is assigned manually and the minimal case data is right now maintained in the custom database then uh you know the agent works on that case if it is not resolved within 24 hours the case gets escalated uh, and then you know it gets resolved and manually the reports are generated and emailed so one of the person from the it department creates the reports and share it on the ad hoc basis so the pain points that we have identified with this current process is you know um, there is a great level of customer dissatisfaction the manual case assignment and escalation happens so there is no automation at the moment uh, there are a lot of communication gaps uh, of course because we depend heavily on email uh, there is a lack of metrics, no data analytics and visualization is done at the moment. The custom database has minimal data, so stakeholder did mention, you know, that they would like to have more data maintained so that they can have a 360 view of the case. And the high call volume because there is a lack of knowledge access to the customer as well as to the agent. So uh, to work on these pain points, uh, this is the future state uh, you know, we want to propose. So there will be a customer self-service portal uh, in which you know, uh, the bars call or email, the queries will be addressed. Now for this, the best part is going to be the access to the FAQs and knowledge. So there will be a 24 seven access uh, to the knowledge so that most of the queries will be resolved uh, by customer just reading through the FAQ or you know, trying to access the self-service portal and still if the query is not resolved it will be logged as a case in the service uh, cloud the unassigned cases will be assigned uh, based on the criteria which we have the assigned cases uh, will be worked upon by the agent uh, of course if, the, if they are not resolved in 24 hours the case will be auto escalated and will be resolved and we will have a reports and dashboard to give the case 360 view uh, to everyone who want to have access to it. And the most important part is based on the reports and dashboard and our learnings, we are going to update the FAQ and the knowledge base uh, from our learning. So that's how the when next time when the customer comes with the same query, they will have the answer ready. Now the level two explains like when the case is locked, based on the case type, Either it will be assigned to the billing team or, uh, you know, the service, customer service team. So this will be automatically done. 
Now, uh, during the gap analysis, so we try to understand the current process. We have the proposed future state, and we want to achieve all these major points which stakeholder has mentioned that we want to reduce the 90% call resolving in first interaction, complete view of the case, data analytics, and knowledge centralization. So for this, we want to provide the customer self-service portal, chatbot and knowledge, auto case assignment, 360 view of the case, reports and dashboards, uh, case ownership. Now, this is important because, you know, what we heard from stakeholder is the same case is worked upon two different agents because there is no case ownership at the moment. So we want to address that point as well as we want to work on automated status update. By this, I mean, whenever the case moves from one state to another, we want uh, that status to be informed to the agent to whom it is assigned, as well as to the uh, customer who has raised that case. So uh, that's all I have. So any questions awesome. or you have? Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so yeah, again, <clears throat> some really good points there, right? And that last slide in particular, bring it all, bringing it all together. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, as a salesperson, <laughs> um, I would say on the left, you had the sort of the things that you wanted to achieve for the organization, <laughs> some really good metrics in there, like 90% um, first resolution, something or other. I can't remember the exact details you put there. Make them bigger, right? For okay. the organization, okay. That is mm -hmm. like, boom, mission critical. We're going to reduce the core volume. We're going to improve customer satisfaction. We're going to la, 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 la. And then on the right, you've got the how. So the what and the how. The what is the key thing. The how, sure, we trust you. We're going to make you the, the people that do the what. That's grand. Um, I think the process flows that you presented, they were clearly, as I zoomed in, they were clearly really well um, drafted up and, and articulated on, on the diagrams. Good. Couldn't see them on the screen. So maybe think about how do I summarize that, right? How do I, because there's there's such a lot of detail there, it gets quite uh -huh. small. And okay. I guess the question would be for the audience that you're presenting to, do they need that level of detail or do they just need some mm -hmm. summary stuff so you can make the summaries bigger, the, the bit, yeah, do you see what I mean? <coughs> um, other than that, I think a good, good analysis of the challenges um, and a, a good story flow that kind of took me through the thought process that you'd been through uh, as, a, as a, you know, uh, as a team um, to to come to the the conclusions that you did. And that's always important, right? Telling that story. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for the feedback. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming up, Monica. We're going to turn the stage over to Kumari. Kumari, welcome. And go ahead and share your screen, Kumari. While you pull that up, we've got a question, Nicole, from Lee. Is there a gap analysis format that you prefer? Oh, um, you know what? Every organization you work for has got a different way of doing things, different way of presenting things. Um, so no, um, I think, I think, yeah, no. <laughs> I think right. it's just, it depends. Yeah, it, it depends, right? It depends. It depends who you work for. Um, it depends what the customer likes. Um, yeah, it, it's just too varied. <clears throat> Wonderful. So that means it's you have the freedom to choose what you would like and see what works and run with it. All right, Kumari, the stage is yours. Kumari, we can see your screen, but we cannot hear you. Is it just me? No, no, we can't hear. No? Um, okay. Uh, oh, there you are. Can you hear me now? Again? Yes. Kind of. You're super, super dim. Try again. Okay, can you hear me? Am I audible? <laughs> you, are you are audible if we listen intently. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I also like Kumari's format. Um, I know there's no like right way to do it, but personally for me, I like being able to see the, the bridge, right? The current state mm. on one side, the desired state and what's in between. It helps, it helps with the visual aspect. 
Yeah, I will see. Well, whilst Kamari is sorting out her technical issues, unless you want to move to somebody else, the, 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 the thing I would say is that very often we focus on how something looks and not necessarily the content. Um, and I always think that's a, you know, the content is always much more important, except mm. when you have good content and it's presented well, it just sings, right? If you have yeah. good content and it's buried in a mess of, well, just a mess, then it, it's hard to understand it, hard to um, really elicit that information. Definitely, definitely. Okay, Kumari, try saying something else. Let's see if we can hear you. Otherwise, we'll move to the next presenter and bring you up after we figured out what the audible, audio problem is. Kumari, try saying something else. No. It doesn't sound like we can hear you. Okay, mm. Kumari. Uh, Kumari, I'm going to go ahead and remove you from the stage. If you'll try rebooting your browser and then coming back on, uh, if you need to like blow into the microphone, there may be dust or something in there to, to clear that up and then come up on stage after that. In the meantime, Nita, we'll bring you up. So go ahead and share your screen. Good morning, Nicole. Good evening, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Okay. Is it visible? Can you guys see my screen? Yep. All right. So uh, this is just copy pasted scenario from LMS. So I'll move to the next slide. So right now, cricket stream is kind of having uh, facing many challenges because of the process, which is not customer centric. So they have their desired future state, which was uh, discovered during the interview process, and they want to empower their customers and increase the efficiency by implementing more automation in their future state. So this is the gap analysis and action plan. Uh, I and uh, I have created and I'll be honest, I added the timeline, the last tiny box just now after listening to Nicole. Nicole's tip in the beginning that there should be some timeline uh, from current state to move to future state. So this is the aspect I'll quickly run through. There are two slides. Uh, slides of this pain points, current state, future state gaps, and action plan, and approximately timeline. I just added random numbers, two weeks, three weeks. Love it. <coughs> Sorry? Uh, I, I was just saying love it. Good. When, okay. Random numbers are always good. Okay. okay. Uh, so I'll go through one of the aspects. So right now, the customers do not have any sales service for, for even simple questions. They have to reach to the uh, customer's agents, customer support agents. So in the future state, they want to automate this process and empower the customers by providing them, by implementing self-service options. And uh, the action plan is to use the knowledge base where all the articles will be uh, updated uh, articles will be shared with the customer so they can just search and instead of reaching to customer service they can just uh, look for the solutions for their query so is it okay if i go through another aspect or uh, i mean i don't let's, know how much time yeah, I have. Let's, let's jump in for feedback so we can give okay, kumari sure. a chance but yeah okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is great, Nicole. What What do you got? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look. Um. I. I. Well. First of all, you followed the brief, right? One of the brief uh, points in the exercise was to complete the sentence, and I think mm -hmm. you're probably the first one that's done that. Not that that's you know, a pass or fail, right? But you followed the brief. Always good. Listen to the customer. But the sentence was quite long, and I'm not sure I managed to get all of the points out of it. So, the second slide that you showed us, which had that great summary of uh, and the colors really allowed me to quickly grab the information so good use yeah that sorry that that one yes um <clears throat> good summary L nice structure right what am what am i what are we thinking about we're thinking about core volumes what's the current state good use of color um red you know not great green good just be careful of red green color blindness but that's cool um 
I don't know how else you would do it, right? We can't always be 100% um, accessible, but just be aware that that, that might be a challenge. Um, mm-hmm. But I like that structure. I like the, the the story you're telling in that one slide to a business mm-hmm. owner is perfect. What am I talking about? What's the current problem? Where are we going to get you? What's the mm-hmm. gap? How are we going to do it? The thing I might add, mm-hmm. <clears throat> timeline you've added, good. I would actually pull that out and have a, a separate slide that is the timeline of from here to there, this is what we're delivering. And, you know, um, I would actually add um, the impact or the outcome, the success measure, right? So put in some dollar values or some, you know, we're going to, we're going to reduce your call volumes by 30% or something, or we're going to increase customer satisfaction by tracking the NPS score and we're going to increase it 20 points. Right. What, what yes. Those key metrics can really make a difference um, mm-hmm. yeah, to a business owner. OK. Yeah, uh, that's definitely I will add that point. Uh, thank you so much, Nicole. Uh, thank nice you so much. Mm-hmm. Nice job, Nita. I love the uh, in session improvement that you did. So I have no doubt your next iteration will improve the, or will include those next steps. Kumari, let's do a sound check. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me now? Yay! <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Okay, <laughs> so it's very bird. I, I, I'm not. I didn't go in detail. So the thing is that uh, current state, desired state, and the gap between that. So the current challenges the teams are facing that they don't have a centralized case management system. So when case is coming from the billing team. When case is coming for um, for a billing inquiry, or it's coming for the technical one, they don't know where to put it. So, the desired one is they want a system where they can differentiate and they can put both the case in a separate way, so it won't get um, mingled or it didn't create any confusion. So the gap is the difficulty in lodging and tracking cases because of a lack of proper case management system. The second problem is that the support team get overwhelmed by the high rise of high high volume of customer calls. So here, they need some something that they, that the pressure should be reduced by team members, and how it can be done by automating the system, live chatbot, live chat chatbot, kind of thing that can handle those uh, overwhelming situation. And the gap is that the insufficient resources, because they're sometime during the holiday or uh, festive seasons, suddenly there is a peak in cases. So it's difficult for team to handle those things. So the gap is that insufficient resources and strained efficiency due to the high call volume. The third challenge they are facing, customers experience confusion about whom to contact for inquiries. So. If there is a proper communication channel and it's defined that if this kind of inquiry you're going to ask, you have to go for that particular, you have to select this. Uh, For example, if I'm uh, calling regarding a credit card issue, so billing team should handle this. Again, the gap is that difficulty in identifying the right contact person for specific inquiries. And next is lack of self-service options for customers. So desired one is there should be something where self-service option to be the minimize and desired uh, desired, uh, the the gap is they don't have a desire for customers to resolve inquiries independently, uh, which which will lead to reduce the call volume. They can go, they can uh, read some knowledge article, some knowledge uh, in a knowledge repository. They can find some article which is related to case. They can read and they can identify the problem and they can solve it on their own. And the, another is the complex inefficient billing system. So for that, they need to be simplified, streamlined, like uh, technic- I don't want to use technical term, but yeah, they need different record types so they can use it. Billing team is different one and the technical team different. So the gap is that the complexity and efficiency in the current processes. 
And the last one is the inefficient case routing and inadequate history maintenance. So whenever a case is coming, there is no process to put it in a proper way and track them. So for that, again, they need a proper case management system. So efficient case routing and comprehensive history maintenance. So whenever uh, agent have to go and see uh, the information are there like a billing record or sometime uh, if they need to see uh, the product is under warranty. So those kind of things, if it's there in, the sense, uh, in a centralized system, they can review it. They can immediately answer the question. So during the first contact, they can resolve the problem. And the gap is that the lack of efficient case routing in uh, inadequate history tracking. So this is the way I have drafted it. Cool. And uh, it's very primitive, I know. <laughs> no, no, it's, it, again, a good structure. Um, it, the challenge is always the, the words to use, right? And the, the, the um, I don't know, sometimes I find when I'm completing tables like this that I'm, almost repeating myself you know the current state is this well the gap is kind of the same just worded differently um so i think just try and be a little bit careful about that i i yeah. typically to, you know I, I i i'll bang something out and then i'll go away and do something else for a couple of hours and come back to it with a fresh eye and kind of go hang on a minute i've said the same <laughs> thing again um so yeah. just come back to it with fresh eyes i think um you know you've identified the, the challenges with the current state and what the future state might be and therefore try to work out what the gap is. So um, I think, yeah, look, I think it's a, a good structure. Again, structure is always good. Maybe just think a little bit more about the story that you're trying to tell um, in, yeah. in the presentation. Um, but yeah, good, good structure and good, good thoughts. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kumari. Thank you to all of our fabulous presenters today. Big round of applause to everyone for coming up on the stage. Let's do a little bit of a wrap up here. If we could summarize the session, maybe top three insights about gap analyses based on what we've talked about today, what would you say, Nicole? Oh, I guess a good question. Um, okay. Uh, I know we think about the technology. Just remember that's not the business's way of thinking. They, they you almost almost don't want to know how the sausage is made, right? Um, think about the story that you're trying to tell. Um, you're talking to people who are trying to do their jobs better. How are you going to help them do that? And you said three, darn. Um, structure, structure and clarity is always good. Um, so when you're putting together your slides, take a step back. They should stand alone, right? So if you were to show them to somebody who had no idea what you're talking about, do they make sense? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like I like what you had said earlier about looking at it. If it's not clean, if it's not yet clear, come back to it after you haven't been looking at it for a while. It's it's like it's like if you're doing a super badge and you've already spent six hours on it, it's just after some point yeah. in time, you, yeah, you yeah. gotta come back to it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely. All right, everyone. Well, that is gap analysis. Define the current state, define the future state, do it in a clear and concise manner. Yes, as Rohan says, KISS method rules supreme. Keep it simple. Salesforce is what yeah. the last we'll let's with that. <laughs> keep it simple. Salesforce. All right. Thank you, Coach Nicole, yes. for being here today, for import imparting your knowledge on this. If you all loved the session and would like to see more of these types of sessions, this deliverable would love and so appreciate y'all's feedback. It takes about 58 seconds, so we know how to make these improvements even better. For those of you who are evening people, go have a great dinner. For those of you who are morning people, have an amazing day, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take care.